In previous episode, we talked about the basics of cloud native database. In this one, we were doing deep dive of cloud native database, GaussDB. First, let's look at the challenges with traditional database design. This is the typical deployment of a database at Huawei Cloud. In this deployment, there are one master, one standby, and one replicas. Each of the database operates its own data set. You can see there's uh, several challenges with this design. First, the data is stored multiple copies. Not only each node has a full set of data, and also three redundant copies and storage for reliability. This is the big waste of the storage. Second, write amplification. Not only the redo log, also bin logs, as well as data pages have to written to the storage. The third, waste of the compute power, because the bin log is logical, which need to be parsed and applied for each standby and replica. And the slow recovery time. If the master is done, they need to make sure the standby has the native data. It will take time to apply all the pending changes before open for requests. And the last, slow to add replica. First, you have to have a full set of data, which may take a significant amount of time. We already saw the traditional database design does not work well in modern cloud environment. We need to leverage the cloud technology and modern storage system. The design of GaussDB follow the following principles. The first, decoupling. The separation of storage and the compute, so storage and the compute can scale independently. The second principle is log is the database. The compute node write only logs to the storage, no page flashing, which significantly reduces the network traffic. Third, leverage next generation cloud storage. The durability and data replication are done in the storage layer, which is highly reliable and have many enterprise features, including auto healing and flexible consistency. We also exploit property of modern hardware, for example, RDMA or tiered storage. We also push down operation close to data because of smart storage with computational power. We have data partitioned for scalability. Data is automatically partitioned into multiple storage and support up to 128 terabytes of data for each database. OK, let's look at GaussDB architecture. Based on the design principle, the whole system consists of three layers. The top layer is SQL layer. It handles transaction and query processing. It has a single master up to 15 read replicas. The master handle writes and the replica handle reads. No page flashing across network. And the bottom is DFA storage layer. It is based on Huawei new generation block storage. It has the low latency, fast data pass, and also pluggable architecture. The mid layer is the storage abstraction layer. It is actually the logic layer with SQL module and and SQL layer, slash store, and storage layer. It achieved two main purposes. First, isolate the SQL from the details of how storage is organized. Second, the design is not for any specific database. It's a foundation for additional database support. The design looks like some paper. How about the real performance? We compare the GaussDB with our competitors with the same hardware configuration. And the left side showed read-write performance in terms of the operation per second. Of course, the higher, the better. Performance results show that GaussDB is faster by margin, ranging from 16% and suspend for read-intensive to more than 160% and TPCC for write-intensive operations. The right side shows the replication lag. The lower, the better. We measure read replica latency, very low, and the master from one operation per second to more than 200,000 write operation per second for those data points where database A data is available. Cost DB lag is smaller. The performance number validated the design. 
Now let's look at how GhostDB performs update. That explains why GhostDB has high performance. The top layer is the SQL layer. It's the accept the SQL query and, and doing the query execution. The bottom layer is the storage. They have the two stores. One is the common log store, that for redo log, and also have the slash store, that for the page. When doing the page update, it will first update the page in the buffer pool and also write the redo log in the log buffer. When transaction commit, the redo logs are sent to the common log processor, which is written to three available log stores for strong consistency. The database then considers the data to be persist. In this case, we can acknowledge the application. Application can start a new transaction. At the meantime, come log processor process redo logs. It will distribute the redo log to the buffer of the slash store that are responsible for the pages. Slash store write the log to slash logs sequentially and update the log directory. If any slash store finished the operation, acknowledge the common log processor. So in this case, from step five to step nine, is not on the critical path of the transaction commit. Okay, now let's look at how the primary and the replica sync up the data update, and also explain why the replication lag is small for Gauss DB. Here, the step one to four, about the same as the last page. So that's till the redo log are persisted. Step five, the saw module pass redo log and extract transaction info and the page updated for each transaction. And six, the sync engine and read replica, read the update ARSN and other metadata from the master. And then update the local slice manager. Number eight, the read redo logs from the common log store. And then the generate new page version if the page already in the buffer pool. Or to invalidate all the pages. We just show the cost DB replication lag is very small. One of the major reasons is that the, the communication message between the master and the replica the volume is very small. This is the end of this episode. In the next episode, we will discuss some high availability features.